Welcome back. In cognitive psychology, we typically talk about averages. We don't talk so much about individual differences, but working memory capacity or how much information you can hold in working memory is an important exception to this tendency in the field of cognitive psychology. Different people can hold different amounts of information in their working memory. Some people can hold a lot, some people can only hold a little. How much information you can hold in working memory changes over your life. As you look at this graph, which at my age I find very depressing, uh, it turns out the students in my class have a much larger working memory capacity than I do. Bummer. People with low working memory capacity, it's as if they can't manipulate or juggle or keep fresh um, as much information as people with a larger working memory capacity. And I should say that people use capacity and working memory span uh, uh, interchangeably. Um, so, for example, people with smaller working memory capacities or working memory scans have more trouble on the Stroop task, which may be when why when I do the Stroop task, I make mistakes all over the place and my students make many fewer mistakes. Uh, low working memory span individuals are easily distracted by other information um, and uh, they, can, they can really struggle with complicated problems. There's an advantage though to being a low memory span, working memory span person, and that is you don't get caught up in the super complicated explanations of things. You tend to find the simple solutions because you're not all the extra knowledge, it, it's not so distracting. But here's a case I wanted to tell you about. It's a study that just came out a few months ago from UC Riverside. They did something I never would have thought of. They looked at working memory capacity as it related to whether people socially practice social distancing during the beginning of the COVID pandemic. So we're talking late March, early April. These researchers designed an online study where they asked people about their various responses and behaviors and activities during the pandemic and they also measured their working memory capacity. And what they found here is you see how the line, the average, is a sloped upward? They found that people with low memory, low working memory capacities were less likely, significantly less likely, to practice social distancing than people with high working memory capacities. Why? Well, if you'll recall, at the beginning of the pandemic, different information sources were telling people different things. If you listen to some people, they would tell you that COVID-19 either didn't exist or if it did exist, it wasn't a big deal. Other people would say, holy smokes, are you kidding? You don't want this uh, virus. Uh, it can kill you. And if it doesn't kill you, you'll pass it on to other people in your family and it may kill them. So there was lots of conflicting information. And it turns out if you have a low working memory capacity, you really struggle to deal with conflicting messages. You need a simple message. People with a big working memory capacity could say, okay, this news source is telling me that the virus is un you know, not impactful, not a big deal. This other news source is telling me that COVID-19 is a very big deal. Who am I going to pay attention to? Well, how about if I pay attention to the people who are epidemiologists or have medical degrees and I'll do what they say. So people with large working memory capacities could deal with the conflicting information. People with small working memory capacities couldn't. They couldn't hang on to that conflict. So they just defaulted to the simplest solution, which is, ah, no big deal. Interesting, right? Who would have thought that working memory capacity could have an impact on whether or not you survive and your family members survive a pandemic? Okay, one last thing here is I want to remind you of some studies since midterms are starting to appear on the horizon for my students. 
I want to remind you of the study about worry and working memory capacity. Remember the choking study? It turns out when you worry, you fill up your working memory capacity. So you might go from being a high working memory capacity person to a low working memory capacity person because you filled up so much of your working memory with worry. Oh my God, what happens if I fail this exam? We know from Bayok's lab that there is an easy solution to that problem. You never need to choke on an exam again. I really hope my students take this to heart. It's the simplest manipulation ever. Take 10 minutes before an exam and do expressive writing. Get all that worry out onto a piece of paper and then take that piece of paper, crinkle it up and throw it away or write it on your laptop and when you're done, delete it. No one ever sees it. Just take 10 minutes to get all of that worry off of your shoulders or more importantly, out of your working memory capacity so you can deal with all of the questions on an exam with your maximal working memory capacity, not with a compromised working memory capacity. People who don't take advantage of the expressive writing manipulation are essentially taking an exam with one hand tied behind your back. Why would you do that? That's it for lecture series 10 in my cognitive processes class. Students, head back to Canvas. Everybody else, thanks for joining us.